Was there a particular moment that, that you three thought, well, now is the time to, to, we've kind of figured out what we want to do and now it's the time to, to start recording again or start writing? <coughs> um, part of that was actually down to our label. Okay. Uh, it's a label in France called Very Chords. Hmm. And uh, an A&R guy from there, he had worked with us in 2007. He was passionate and then there was some like business weird stuff. Um, and he came back and said, I want you to get in the studio right now and I can help make that happen financially and everything. So we were like, yeah, okay, we'll do it. We'll just figure it out. And we did a writing session in New York and we had all of our kids running around in the studio the whole time and we had the best time and came out with 10 good songs in a few days. So, so were all the songs that, were, uh, that <coughs> ended up on the album, were they written? Um, after that moment, after that point where you decided to go? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. pretty much. They just all kind of came together. Do you remember like what that. the first one, one was? The first song that really sparked it all was called, it was Refuse. Okay. Um, uh, which was about just accepting yourself and standing up for yourself and finding people who like you and to stand up and be yourselves together. Right. Um, and that's, uh, that kind of resonated with the band as a whole because then we could we could get together and do our music mm -hmm. and just be unashamedly fiction plain. And, and well, the, about Refuse, uh, in, is, is it fair to say lyrically some of the songs are quite introspective where, where as you say, it's kind of <coughs> figuring out who you are and that, that you find your place in, in the world in a sense? I, I think that's very fair to say. Okay. I so, think a lot, of, a lot of it is about that actually. Um, so refuse, in my shoes, mm -hmm. walk through the fire. All I can think of spe specifically about that. Uh, actually, real life. It's just about figuring out who you are and and uh, dealing with the world. Is is there something that that sparked this train of thought or this this kind of <coughs> subject matter? Hmm. Um, I, <laughs> I guess it would be a lack of uh, being able to accept ourselves okay. until that point or myself so but I'd, I won't speak for anyone else right. I couldn't I couldn't kind of reconcile my own existence for a long time why not uh, I just d didn't feel like um, I fit in okay. I felt but like I felt like Tom York felt when he wrote creep right but without becoming Tom York now <laughs> who's the, just the coolest guy in the world <laughs> but was it was it really in an existential sense or, or more in, 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 in what you were doing with music or yeah, I know, it was pretty existential. Okay. Because you were doing quite well for yourself. So, so this, do you know where this kind of, this, this doubt maybe <coughs> came from? Um, I don't know, but my, I have a family history of, of extreme doubt. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't even go, uh, I won't talk about your father too much, but it doesn't even go back to your father? Uh, he's, well, he's pretty good at not doubting. Okay. But my, the other side of my family is uh, they're, they're professional doubters. <laughs> okay. So, okay. And well, does it help then when you write a record like this one? Does it help uh, kind of make sense of it, of it all? It, yeah, it does. It does. But I think the thing about being, um, having very, like very strong doubts about yourself is even, even when things are going great, you can always find a reason why it's going to fail. Okay. It's a little bit like, um, I always liken it to tennis. Hmm. You know, you're 5-2 five five up in the last set and you've still got four chances to lose <laughs> the entire set. Right. But it, this makes it sound like a really difficult process to, to get an album done. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but you know what? The, the, the point of music for me is that's where it goes away okay. to some extent, especially playing live. Okay. I just start to get into a groove and everything's good. So, um, well, in, in terms of the sound, then, was there also a specific sound that you wanted to capture to, to kind of <coughs> go with, with this new, new train of thought? Um, I think we wanted to be... The, the album less, has less physical energy mm -hmm. than we usually put into it. We usually are in a room and we just go at it for hours and hours and just rock something out. And this time we decided to create a melody and just trust the melody and let the melody take us or the lyric, and really trust it to take us there without having to hammer it. Right. Um, and we also, we worked with uh, a new producer, a guy called Tom Sirowski, 
who's uh, he's Brendan O'Brien's protege, mm. for, for want of a better word. And he knows a lot of stuff. And he was able to listen back and say, okay, I know how to sonically justify this. And it gave us a lot of freedom. So we'd come up with a melody which maybe wouldn't be that strong if we were trying to hammer it home. But if you just take a breath and maybe put a, a hammer chord underneath it, playing one note, mm. it's going to totally work. So. Well, was it the first time, because you, you mentioned that you had these writing sessions, um, mm -hmm. was it the first time that you wrote the songs in this way where you kind of took a specific amount of time and not too much time and, and write <clears> the song? Yeah, yeah, we were all limited by like real life, uh, our families and kids. Mm -hmm. And actually having our kids around meant that we couldn't, we just couldn't go into like a dark hole and disappear. Right. We had to, they would come and complain if the music wasn't nice. Okay. Well, if it didn't excite them, it it would you could tell, and it was it was a nice way to have an audience that's totally honest. So it's kind of, kind of the first critics you have yeah, for the yeah, yeah, and it's you know it's an unfiltered thing. They're just like, oh, I like it, I don't like it, I like it, I don't like it. Okay, and then I saw I saw a bit of of the behind the scene footage on, on your website, and there was a big box with all kinds of different uh, instruments, cowbells. Mm -hmm. and, so and and. On the record, there are some some sounds that you didn't have on the records before. So yeah. was this uh, uh, something you wanted to do to some, to try and experiment uh, experiment a bit more? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think I guess we wanted to get out of just being a rock band. I guess. Mm -hmm. um, we were, uh, how come? How come? How come? Because well, it was a good place when we did our album uh, Left Side of the Brain in two thousand seven. We actually decided, okay, we're just a rock band. It's three piece. If there's any extra things needed, then this is not a good song. Mm. And that was how we kind of focused. And eventually we just were like, you know what, we want to, we've got that core. We can always go back to it, but we want to expand and just let's go crazy. Let's not be scared of <coughs> using a cheesy sounding keyboard because in the right context, it might sound awesome right. or cowbells or whatever, or little shaky things. So was this uh, um, a nerve-wracking thing to do, to, to see what people would think of the new record then? Um, I guess right now it is, but everybody's been very positive. I, th I think we got over it. We, spent, we left it for three months. Um, we finished it three months ago, mixing mm -hmm. and everything, and then we just sat back, left it, and then we started playing it to people a couple of weeks ago. And in that process, I think we've got perspective, so we can, we can enjoy it. That's and if somebody says they don't like it, it's I'm f fine. Mm -hmm. You yeah. will. <laughs> <laughs> did, did songs change over those th three months for you? The, in terms of how they felt to you or, or the kind of the meaning they had? Yeah, yeah, they did. I think. Can you give me one example, maybe? It, hmm. I, think, I guess I'm not, maybe not the meaning of the lyrics of the mm -hmm. songs, but the way. So you, when you're writing a song, it's every single note, lyrics feels like it's this big and this important. And oh right. my God, you, you can't change that because then it's... And you put it down on a record and play it to someone else and it's actually it comes out smaller. <laughs> it's not so crazy what you're saying. Right. I think, it, you know, if you're, if you're like singing into the mirror and if someone walked in and looked at you, you'd be like, ah, oh, don't look at me. But you realize it's, it's not that big of a deal. Right. It's fine. And it, when I think about the things that I was um, getting neurotic about or stressed out about during the process, now I see them, I'm like, that's whatever. Totally fine. <laughs> so that must be quite an easy, e easing thought, uh, feeling to, to go now on stage now. Yeah. Yeah, I feel good. I trust the songs. I believe in them. When did the title Mondo Lumina pop up? We, uh, we started looking for a title last summer and just... <coughs> we, I wanted it to reflect the kind of colour and light that I, f I felt when I listened back to it. I felt mm. very... I thought it was very clear lyrically to me and the, and the arrangements were very clear mm. and colourful. I was seeing all this like blue and pink uh, like neon light mm. in, my, in my head when I saw it so... We just knocked around some titles, and that was that was the one that stuck. Okay, so that's, that's <coughs> kind of the way you you experience the music. Yeah. Okay. Well, finally, uh, you <coughs> did four 
it was it four shows in the, in the fall of um, mm -hmm. here in the Netherlands. Yeah. Then I think now for in-store sessions, and you'll be coming back later this month. So, and you even recorded a, a live DVD here in uh, Paradise. Yeah. What What is the connection with Fiction Plane and the Netherlands for you? Um, I, for me, it's that well, a few things. Basically, people know us here, they remember us here, and they are open to us. Like even we went away for four years and we didn't do any anything and when we came back everyone was there mm. ready to ready to rock um i love being here anyway just it, even if there was no kind of success for us here i'd still come around and ride a bike around right. in amsterdam i love it <clears throat> um i i don't know it's just fun because because you even speak a little bit of dutch i heard earlier yeah just so. a little bit just a little bit I, i just enjoy the whole experience okay. and maybe that's just being a tourist but <laughs> It's, it's a nice vibe for me. All right. Thank you very much. Cool. I'll be